Hi, welcome back. As you've probably heard me say many times by now, we're all forever learning. Today is no different for me. I'm about to embark upon a new journey, one that will take us to the stars. Hopefully you'll want to come along the way and see what's out there. I've been waiting for a package that should be arriving shortly. Once it gets here, I'll take you through an unboxing and a setup of the new Celestron CGX mount. While we're waiting for my shipment to arrive, I've been doing some research and reading, yep, watching quite a few YouTube videos, trying to learn all I can about the small field of astrophotography. If you think this sounds interesting or might be something you'd like to know more about, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ding the little bell to see my next videos where we actually put this new scope through its paces. Over the next few days or even weeks, I should be uploading videos as I add the optical tube assembly, which most of us refer to as a telescope, followed by a video on the tracking scope and tracking camera, as well as main imaging camera and filters. Following all of this will be what I imagine quite a bit of trial and error as I try to capture my first images of space. For now, let's head on over and get started with that unboxing and setup. So there it is. That's the new Celestron telescope and all those boxes, uh, seven to be exact. But let's start unpacking it and see what we got. First one I know of is this uh, larger box is the tripod. I think this is the first thing you want to set up. So let me get this guy out. And don't worry, I will time lapse through this whole thing so you can see this set up quicker. So I just said to myself, boy, is that heavy. Those are the counterweights. Okay, I just repositioned the camera a little bit because I realized I was probably cutting my head off. So uh, the two heavy boxes were the uh, counterweights for the mount. And I imagine I got the parts tray right here. I'll just hide this under here for now. So there's a box inside a box to keep it protected. And this is the famous Celestron jack of all trays so that's an equipment tray or an optics tray and they aptly named it the jack of all trades it is pretty nice it's actually designed to hold the legs in place once it's in position and if you're tired of always taking your If you're tired of always taking your uh, tray off to stow your telescope, well, Celestron fixed that by making this rotatable. So when you have it in use, you bring it up so the legs are all in contact with the uh, tray and holds everything in place. When you want to stow it, you just loosen this up a little bit, rotate it, and then fold your legs in like that, and they're actually designed to fold right into a slot. So pretty actually, kudos to Celestron on the design. Each leg then has an extension, and the extensions have markings on them to make it easy to uh, level in the field. We're not gonna do that right now, I just wanted to show it to you. It's a little bit tight. Time for more Wheaties. So that is the tripod. Now on to the big piece. This is the optical tube. We'll be doing this in the next video. Right now we're just going to set up the mount. Anyone involved in imaging for astrophotography will tell you that the mount is the most important part of your setup. And here is its big operating handbook. So first thing I would do is recommend 
reading through all of this. Uh, however, it's available online, so I download it and read it before it arrives, so I'm ready to get going. Have the uh, hand controller and the power cable, counterweight shaft. So we got knobs for the, uh, I believe, for the altitude adjustment, a uh, strap for the keypad, and I don't know, oh, that's for the uh, mount. I do know what that's for. I'm not sure it's going to come out of here willingly. So Celestron designed this with handles, which are fantastic, but it still has quite a bit of weight to it. You can hear my breathing. So I just set it down on its mount real quick. That needs to go into position, so let me get this bag off. There we go, that'll make it easier. All right, so we align this. We want to put the counterweight over the forward leg, unless you're in a unusual latitude or close to the equator, you may need to swing it around the other way so you can get more clearance. But typically, have your counterweights right over that forward leg. So this is designed to sit on a pedestal and it won't even fall off, it's in place now. So it's actually not bolted in place, but it's sitting on its own shaft. It's very, very secure, just as it is. And now we're gonna put those bolts in place. And to put this together and to work in the field, you need an Allen wrench. And Celeste one conveniently hides one right underneath the handle right here. I'll get a close up of those three screws to mount it. So there was three screws or three bolts around the outside with the Allen wrench. Allen key fits directly underneath there for storage. There's also a bubble level right on top. So as soon as you get set up, you can level it right on site. With the counterweight shaft in place, we do we take off this nut at the bottom, bolt at the bottom. And this is what they call the uh, toe protector. It keeps the weights from sliding down, falling off, and smacking in the toe. Weights are, I think, uh, 5 kilograms, 11 pounds. And now the toe saver goes on. In case they were to slide off, And this should be just enough to prevent that weight from coming off and slamming into your foot. Toe saver. If you watch one of my most recent videos, I cleaned up everything in my house, so those boxes will not stay there. I am gonna keep them just in case you need to ship them back, but uh, they're gonna go into storage probably in my garage. Uh, but they will not stay here past today. Such as an overly priced battery charger, but that is that is the battery charger for the telescope. I don't think we need a radio. Huh? I was just saying I don't think we need a radio, but we got a built-in <laughs> siren, so that's fun. So we're going to need that in a minute to run the mount. 
hand controller can go into aux one or aux two. And the question is, where do I want to mount this? So I'm going to put it on that side. I'll do a better job with this stuff later, but I'm going to get it started. So power cord. Anybody that knows me knows that I hate wires, so be very careful with this for now. And the power cord is actually threaded to prevent you from uh, inadvertently pulling out while imaging. This thing is absolutely sturdy. I mean, this is a monster. I think the uh, mount, I want to say, is 44 pounds, and the legs are 11. It's heavy. It's got some heft to it. It's definitely beefy. Um, so you have altitude adjustment, azimuth adjustment. To adjust the azimuth, you have to loosen up the... Uh, screws I believe right here to move that and altitude I can't see yeah it's mostly set up you just loosen these screws and I'll get a video of this too so you want to set this for the latitude that you're at and I am roughly 40.5 4359 I think it is so you can see there's a small line I can't see that so well it's unfortunate So I'm going to line that up to 40.35, which is pretty close to where it's at now. I did want to mention that the altitude adjustment is supposed to be really smooth because of a arm that they use inside there. So you're actually moving the screw which moves a pivot arm, which moves your altitude to really, really make it a fine tuning adjustment. I moved the camera a little closer so you can get a better view of what I'm about to show you. And I'm also gonna use a handheld or an iPhone to get some close-ups. But let me just scoot around here and we'll go through the setup process real quick. So power is on, on the power supply. Let me get my second camera on, so you can see. It says verifying packages, that's its self-test basically. Uh, choose your language. So if you can read that, zero is English, I'm going to select zero. Enter to accept. And it says, declination switch fail. Press back to continue. That's something you want to see. GCX ready. Press to begin alignment. Oh, press enter. Let's see that again. I can, you can speed up the scrolling because this is slow. Press enter to begin alignment. Set switch position, press enter to move to switch position. So switch position is its home position. If you watch the top, it's going to rotate to the home position because it's not there right now. I'm going to hit enter and it should start moving up top. You can call this a home or a part position. Drive is uh, not too noisy. I thought it would be worse than that. Um, it works on 
a belt driven system. So there's two beefy gears in there with teeth and they drive a belt system, uh, actually a lubricated belt system to make it smooth and to try to eliminate any kind of backlash of the gears for more precise imaging. And I also did set the uh, tripod up so we are roughly aligned. This front leg is aligned with Polaris, uh, but that's just roughly where I think it is that direction. All right, so it says select one, custom site. Just going to hit enter. Enter longitude. So this is my home. And how does it want it? Minutes, degrees, seconds? I wrote down both just in case. So I am. Let's have to go backwards. Zero, four, zero, two, two. Enter. And that's uh, so let's get longitude. We got I just messed that up. I get off my foot here. I did mess that up. Sorry about that. I expected latitude first. And now that I think about that, a good astronomer, a good astronomer would have known that just based on the degrees, because you cannot you can only have 90 degrees in latitude, I can't have uh, 360 degree entry. Universal time coordinated, I can do that. AM or PM? Well, technically it's AM based on that. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick alignment real quick, but this is where you get to your alignment setup. I would use a pole master for polar alignment. It can do its own uh, alignment based on the solar system, one star, two star lines, uh, or last known position, last align or a quick align. I'm just going to do a quick align right now. And we are ready to go. So we're ready to mount the mount and balance it, and that will be part of our next video. So we'll stop right there and start our next video. Well, that's the basic setup for the Celestron CGX mount. If you'd like to see the next videos where I build the rest of my equipment and actually go out and capture some images of space, planets, and galaxies far, far away, just hit the subscribe button down below and ding the little bell to be notified when the new content is up and ready. Well, that's all for now. I hope you're looking forward to learning more about the night skies and what's really out there. I do hope you'll join me, and remember, we are all forever learning.